<laughs> Great pictures to end the hour. Let's uh, cross the news from... Before that, we're just going to head to Washington, but if you've been hearing those briefings over the last few days, you will know the uh, quite extraordinary conditions that rescuers have been working under, and we know that at the height... After this mudslide, uh, are the, at the weekend, uh, the mud in some places was 40 feet deep. So, uh, expecting to say that, uh, expecting that the detail will ultimately rise, but no change actually from yesterday. One Afghan child is reported to have been killed in the fighting and another wounded. Straight to our main headlines here on BBC News. Acceptable treatment by the UK's largest energy firms. He's pledged to set up a regulator to stop companies being rolled onto higher tariffs and forced to pay what he described as crippling bills. But the Chancellor, George Osborne, says Labour is making phony commitments. Let's find out more from our political correspondent. That is brilliant. Can't see that too many times, yeah. can you? It's remarkable. Now you're watching BBC News. Coming up here in the next few minutes. That's coming up in a moment or two. First, though, let's find out what the weather's doing. Nick Miller, Jane Hill and Matthew Emery. It's a little after half past four. These are today's main stories. Now, let's return to our top story, the search, of course, for the missing Malaysia Airlines plane. Australia says five aircraft spotted multiple objects of various colours during today's search operation. Well, uh, photographs are to be analysed of that overnight. It comes after authorities shifted the focus of search efforts to an area about 700 miles northeast of the previous zone. Now, throughout the day, we've been appealing for you to send in questions uh, you have about uh, this missing plane. And earlier, our correspondent Andy Moore was here in the studio to take us through the latest developments and answer some of those questions. From a plane spotting the debris to the arrival of the ship uh, collecting it, why can't the Australian Air Force deploy seaplanes to scoop up the debris or GPS devices to avoid it disappearing somewhere else into the sea? Fitted to the Boeing 777, which is the aircraft in, in question, the Boeing 777, which when a certain G-force is exceeded, inferring a crash, would deploy and then advise a satellite of its position. Uh, if true, in the absence of this data, which can't be overwritten or disconnected, do we assume the plane has actually landed somewhere? John in Sheffield, who says, uh, It is my understanding that Rolls-Royce actively monitor all of its aero engines that are fitted to commercial passenger planes, and that information is downloaded to their headquarters in Derby. Is that what happens? Later on, those pings that were still... Off Fred Claridge, is there, isn't there a way to have the audio from the cockpit sent live to the ground? I'm sure that... Have they done any more to investigate uh, possible decompression on this flight? I think uh, decompression... Haven't there, Andy, where have. planes uh, have dropped in, in altitude quite markedly and then flown on for considerable periods of time? There's a really, really interesting one from uh, George England, who is a professor at Imperial College London. Now, because we've been talking for so many days about this continuing search for debris, of course, this relates to that. Very interesting. It's assumed the aircraft must have broken up and left a debris field. Isn't it possible that the aircraft landed smoothly on the surface of the water after running out of fuel on autopilot? Uh, for example, like the safe landing that people might remember when the plane came down on the Hudson River in the States. If this happened, a safe landing, couldn't the whole plane then just have sunk and therefore there is no debris field? Uh, in terms of crashing the plane, I, assume, I suppose they mean. Uh, previous pilot suicides. And for yes, phones for, most of, certain altitude. for most of this flight... Uh, th a number of tweets, people asking, uh, some of them quite recent as well, asking, uh, couldn't we just be talking about a massive fire on board and that therefore takes out comms, it takes out everything. Uh, that, that surely would be, some people are arguing, is, is something of a straightforward explanation. Uh, it could be a fire but not a massive fire. Is there a possibility here, despite everything that we've seen, just huge amounts of effort the wreckage of this plane? Uh, there's a possibility that we don't find the wreckage. There's a possibility... In a moment, we'll take a look at how the financial markets in Europe close the day. But first, a reminder of today's headlines. Now, from midnight tonight, same-sex couples in England and Wales who want to have a wedding, not a civil partnership, can have one. The government's controversial legislation was passed last summer and lots of weddings are going to be taking place in the early hours of the morning. But it seems not everyone is happy and an opinion poll for BBC Radio 5 Live suggests that one in five people would turn down an invitation to a gay wedding. Here's our religious affairs correspondent, Robert Pickett. 
uh, procedure, what this operation has, has told us, Nick? Well, for the past 20 weeks, we've been providing detailed breakdown of how individual aid... Target. Yep, 95%. A little bit of leeway to, to allow doctors to, to clinically prioritise patients. But... Do we have a sense of why that is? Uh, well, the... Wow, yeah, long time. Thank you very much for now. Nick Triggle, thank you. Well, you're watching BBC News coming up here in the next few moments. The